Hi everyone, welcome back. Thank you for joining me for another video. So what have we got? Well, as I said, we've got continuous string of stories coming out about Harry and Meghan. We've got Harry popping up, introducing the Invictus Games. We've got Harry popping up. He's in Tokyo, then he's in Singapore. Oh look, Harry's at the airport. He's posing in social media with his buddy Nacho, who he plays polo with. Remember, this is Harry that preaches at people at how bad social media is. Well, he clearly has no problem having his photograph posted now on other people's social media accounts but you know it's Harry the prince of hypocrisy now in my last video I said that Meghan is name dropping a-listers and overnight between that video being released it happened again in the comments I did see a few of you saying has John Travolta I mean yeah okay he's had his moments he's had his heyday but he's not as popular a-list as you would think would well, try Taylor Swift Yes, whilst Harry is having his appearance, you know, solo, Meghan decided through the media to announce that she was at a Taylor Swift concert. Now, the reason why it has been given to the media or how I know it's been given to the media is because there was no photographic evidence of Meghan being at this concert. Now, bearing in mind, this is Taylor Swift's biggest sellout tour. This tour is going to actually break the records and they reckon over $1 billion from sales alone, let alone merchandise and everything else. It's absolutely insane. I personally am a Swifty. I love Taylor Swift. I've always loved her. But you have people that are there celebrity spotting. You have got people on TikTok who pride themselves on spotting the celebrities in the crowds. You have actual people that are there, well, thousands, thousands of people, thousands of fans of Taylor Swift, all ages, all sexes, taking photographs of anyone that they see is famous. And then on top of that, the celebrities themselves, they're posting on their social media accounts, yes, us, we're at Taylor Swift, woo! And yet not a single person got a photograph of Meghan. Maybe she was in disguise. Maybe Meghan didn't want to be noticed, so she was all incognito with a baseball cap. The person that reported it with no photograph said that Meghan was so excited that when a song played, she jumped out of her chair and started dancing and cheering. And I was like, mm, yeah, photograph or it didn't happen. Now, why would this story come out? Well, firstly, Harry, as I said, he is doing his own little promotional tour abroad. And it was almost like Meghan can't have him having all of the limelight. So she's got to jump on board with something. Now, I find it, as I said, incredibly weird that not a single outlet has a photograph of Meghan. Meghan releases photographs for pap strolls. So being actually photographed at a huge concert, you think that even just a member of the public, everyone's got their camera phones filming every little moment of their lives, but not a single glimmer of Meghan anywhere. The newspapers were so desperate to use a photograph of Meghan in their stories, they actually cropped photographs of Meghan when she was at the basketball game with Harry. Now, another reason, which I think is the main reason why Meghan has done it, is like I said in the last video, and that is Meghan Markle's name is across lots of media outlets all across social media next to Taylor Swift. And this is the exact same trick that she has been doing. She is using A-listers' names to get her name or it's the talent agency behind it but we know that she did it before she was signed with WME to get her name associated with all of these A-lister Hollywood stars these big mega stars which obviously Megan is not I mean Megan actually she might have genuinely been there and no one cared enough to take her photograph or didn't recognize her that's why she had to alert the media that she was in fact in attendance either way it's just quite clearly another attention group grab and she's using this time Taylor Swift. We know that Taylor turned down Megan's personal letter that she wrote to her asking her to come onto Archetypes, her podcast. Taylor got her representative to say no thank you. So this is another way that Megan can obviously get some sort of association with the megastar that is the Swift. Now, before we move on to the main story, which is Markle v. Beckham, I want to talk about some of the comments that came up in the last video, all to do with this book. Some of you definitely agree with what I was hinting at about the book is almost sounding like it was written for them. 
One particular person that I saw on Twitter last night has actually found out, and I believe that the Royal Grift, who is another YouTuber who unpicks the most unbelievable things, has discovered that Carly Fortune, she was a reporter for Refinery29 Canada. It's a media outlet, very woke. And well, I'll read you the blurb that it says. It's a media company that is focused on young women. They hope to inspire, entertain and empower their audience. All of the buzzwords that we're used to hearing coming out of Megan's mouth. So obviously this is right up her street. Now, whilst Carly worked there as the executive editor, over 200 articles which were pro-Megan came out before she decided to leave to become an author in 20. 21 and subsequently all of the praising Megan articles stopped. So quite clearly there is a connection there. She's admitted herself, she's a massive fangirl, she was crying at the wedding, people have looked back at her, her, her internet history, she is definitely what I would say a Meghan Markle fan. Now the fact that the two women lived in Toronto, I'm in no doubt that they knew some of the same people. Now, is it really, really that far-fetched to think that she has written this book with Harry and Meghan in mind? Another comment that I came across by Yvette Schneider, I hope you don't mind me reading this out, but she said that she'd watched an interview with Carly Fortune, who said that she wrote her first book in four months, but her second book, which is Meet Me at the Lake, took over a year due to making so many changes and so many edits. <laughs> and it makes you think, I wonder, I wonder if someone's had any sort of influence in those edits. Now, I'm not saying this is 100% connected, but it is rather suspicious, isn't it? We know that Harry and Meghan plotted and planned their Netflix documentary before the ink was dry on their wedding certificate, probably before the engagement. We know that they started filming footage almost immediately so that they could have something to put together at a later date. There are a lot of connections. I read an article in the Times and there's so many references where you could say between the couple and this book whether Meghan has actually been involved in it or whether Carly has just done this as some sort of fangirl tribute and just by pure fluke they have managed to pick it up and merge them together you know Penguin Publishers are the ones behind Carly's book and Harry's book we've got WME both sides of the same talent agency as we know with the whole Soho house connection Everything is a game of snakes and ladders when it comes to those two. More snakes than ladders, admittedly. Now, speaking of books, let's get on to the main event. Tom Bauer, the author of Revenge, is in the midst of getting ready to launch his latest book, and it is on the subject of the Beckhams. And this is why the original falling out has been unearthed between Victoria and Meghan. And when I actually read a few articles on it, I didn't even know that it ran this deeply. And I think Victoria and David have been incredibly gracious. And it's almost undone Meghan's storyline narrative. She tried to push that David, well, rather Victoria sold stories on her. If anything, the fact that Victoria has been sitting on this and kept her mouth shut shows that they have a lot more class than Meghan and Harry put together. Needless to say, I definitely understand why Victoria looks slightly peeved at the royal wedding and David sat there chewing gum. So Harry had been friends with David Beckham for a number of years prior to meeting Meghan and like every other relationship and friendship that Harry had with people, Meghan slowly but surely made sure that she destroyed it so Harry would be completely dependent on her. In this particular instance, however, it wasn't one incident, there were multiple incidences. And it all starts when Harry first started dating Meghan. Apparently, Victoria was really, really lovely to Meghan. Meghan wasn't sure on Victoria because she has a sense of humour, British humour, where she takes the mickey out of herself. They met in lots of social situations, restaurants, pubs, and where Harry used to have a laugh, he stopped having a laugh because Meghan didn't find anyone funny. We've seen this running theme with his other friends and that's why Harry's friends stopped inviting them to dinner parties because Meghan wouldn't sit where she was asked to sit. She hated everyone's jokes and told them 
so. You know, talk about sucking the fun out of every party. But when Megan moved to Kensington to live in the super tiny cottage that she's made sure she's moaned about several times across several platforms, the ungrateful pair that they are, Victoria introduced her to people where she could go get her hair done, really nice beauty salons. Now, one of the salons was actually run by Sarah Chapman. Victoria has promoted Sarah Chapman for years. She often promotes her products. She is like the facial queen. Well, funnily enough, Victoria introduces Megan to Sarah Chapman. Megan takes paparazzi along. So this is Sarah Chapman coming out of her salon. And as you can see, Megan's doing her usual, don't look at the camera, don't look at the camera, don't look at the camera. Oh yes, I'm the one that arranged for you to be here. That's it. I must look like I'm pissed off so I can play the, I'm being harassed and hounded just like Princess Diana. And Sarah was obviously sucked into this. But this is where the storyline came from, I believe, that she, Megan, then convinced Harry that because Victoria had introduced her to Sarah, Victoria was the one that must have told the media and the paparazzi where she was for the photographs to come out. So Harry, at this point, being capable of phoning his friend and embarrassingly accusing his wife, Victoria, of selling stories. This is the same Harry that when his wife was suicidal and pregnant, he couldn't ring a therapist, but he had no qualms in attacking a friend who he's known far longer than he did his then fiance. So anyway, David reportedly stood his ground and was quite offended. Victoria obviously didn't sell stories because why would Victoria Beckham sell stories on an other known cable TV actress, please. But obviously when the wedding came round, this was still something that had irritated and I would very much imagine actually hurt Victoria. Now in between this time, Meghan had been doing her usual, which she had done since she joined the royal family and kept bugging Victoria for free clothes. It goes against royal family protocols, but Victoria eventually decided, right, okay, I'll give Megan a coat. And the navy blue coat that Megan wore when she was pregnant, the Christmas day walk that we always see with the royals, this was the coat. Megan was spotted wearing it and the sales did not increase. Victoria then also gave Megan a dress, perhaps as a peace offering, which Megan wore as her last out and about while she was pregnant, which was at Westminster abbey you know when she was trying to look like princess diana but uh, yet again megan funnily enough had no effect on sales but regardless victoria had given in to megan and do you know how megan repaid victoria <laughs> At the wedding, this makes me laugh, at the wedding, I've told you guys this before, but just for newbies, Harry and Meghan invited Meghan's suits cast, Harry's childhood friends and the Beckhams, but you know what they didn't do? They didn't invite them to the evening reception. So they were allowed to have their photographs all going into the church, so it gave Meghan the front page news of a celebrity star studded wedding. But then she uninvited people for the evening. Now, the worst person that fell foul to this, I will always say it's Skippy, Harry's childhood friends, because Meghan and Harry, well, Meghan crashed his wedding in Jamaica. That's where all of this drama was going on. They caused drama, paparazzi were involved, and I'd imagine that that definitely did spoil the day a little bit. With Harry being one of his closest friends, he spent the time arguing with a bunny boiler ex-girlfriend that he dumped who just turned up. It's not what you expect or want at your wedding. So Meghan and Harry kindly repaid Skippy by saying, oh, you've come to the day, you're not invited to the evening, you can go home now, thanks for coming, bye. Who does that? This really, really bugs me. I couldn't imagine inviting someone to come to the day wedding. Her suits, castmates all flew over from America. You're not coming to the evening bit. Sorry, you're not good enough. Only a select few and obviously unknown Hollywood stars were allowed to attend the evening reception. And I find that absolutely disgusting. To be honest with you, I think if I had been skippy after what they did to my wedding and then Victoria and David after the false accusations of selling stories, I think that I would have turned around and torn that wedding invite up and gone, see you later. But David was friends with Harry for a number of years. Now, as it turns out, Tom Bauer has also unearthed another little storyline to this whole mess of why the Beckhams have fallen out with them. Before the wedding, Meghan was trying the grift way back then. David and Victoria had allowed Meghan to stay at their place, one of their mansions, in Beverly Hills before the wedding as well, because Meghan was being hounded by the press and she needed privacy. Whether Meghan had got Harry to ask them or whether the Beckhams just kindly offered to help Harry's fiance out, they let her 
stay with their staff so all of her needs and wants were taken care of. Megan didn't have to worry about anything and this is how she's treated them since. This is a pattern that we've seen with Megan. She is a user. She gets what she wants out of people and then when she thinks that they have served their purpose, then they are dropped like a hot potato. Childhood friends, ex-colleagues, people that have worked with Megan over the years all say the exact same thing. When Megan is done and she decides that you are of no use to her, you are markled without a second thought, like throwing out a pair of shoes. Now, whether it was that that ended the friendship or maybe the final straw that broke the camel's back was when Harry and Meghan at the wedding, well, rather Harry, had said to David, David, why don't you fly out to the Invictus Games in Sydney? This would be a really big event. So David did. David, I mean, it's obviously not a big thing for them to, you know, they've got millionaires themselves and travel around the world, but he went to the Invictus Games. Harry's um, team kept running rings around David and he was asking, well, where is he? Where is he? And Harry didn't meet up with David and Victoria once. David sat in the crowds, basically. He was out there to be with his friend and Harry made no effort whatsoever to speak to him, to even do a photo op for the Invictus Games with him. But no, he was too busy off with Meghan doing other things. They were too busy to spend time with them. But Tom Bauer believes it might be something which I happen to agree with. It was because of jealousy. Meghan, as we know, she decided to announce her pregnancy when she was merely weeks. At Princess Eugenie and Jack Brooksbank's wedding, she did that, so the attention then was on her. She had also reportedly been asked to have the tour. The tour should be about meeting all those countries and people, but of course, as we know with Megan barely weeks pregnant was cupping a bump that wasn't there the whole time every single photo opportunity Megan was already making the tour about herself about her pregnancy no there's nothing wrong with being excited about your first pregnancy but bearing in mind she was there to work it wasn't a holiday it was about drawing attention to other people and Megan was making it about herself with that in mind this is reportedly why Megan was the one as we know she wears the trousers in that relationship she didn't want to see David and Victoria because she didn't want them to have any of the limelight. She didn't want to share any of the limelight with Victoria Beckham. And it's completely believable. Look at the jealousy, the way that she's been with Catherine. Megan is not a team player. Megan is not a girl's girl. So this is completely believable. Plus, as we know, Tom Bauer, the reason why Megan never sued over revenge and nor has Harry, is because he actually finds this information out from reliable sources so he doesn't get sued. So despite everything that David and Victoria had done for Meghan, Meghan getting the free clothes, Meghan being able to stay at their property in Beverly Hills, no doubt using their private jet, their staff, their transport, all of the things that the Beckham have done to make Meghan welcome and that's how they were treated. And then to top that off, to add a final insult to David, they stood him up at the Invictus Games. He flew specifically, his family rented a house and they stood him up absolutely disgraceful, disgusting behaviour. No wonder not just Hollywood A-listers have turned their backs on him. Harry has reportedly lost so many friendships. We've seen stories coming out, friends getting married and Harry's not invited. Apparently Harry has even fallen out with one of the closest families that he had left after Spare. They found the attacks that he put against his family a step too far. He's lost lots of friends in the military because of the things that he spoke about, obviously killing the Taliban. And it's just been disaster after another. Harry has shown no loyalty to his friends, to his family ever since he's met Meghan. And it's truly not shocking why the Beckhams have decided, do you know what, you're not markling us, <laughs> we're markling you, see you later. David actually went up in my estimations hugely when the Queen died and he queued like a member of the public. He could have queue jumped, he could have had his bodyguards, he could have done a holly and fill, but he did not. He queued for hours to pay his respects. There have been a few little blips in David's career all to do with the knighthood and stuff, but in that moment watching him and when he shed a tear, I'm sitting there crying at home and it was just, it was a deeply emotional thing for David. You could tell the respect was genuine. Now, how sad is it that Harry's friend probably had more respect for his grandmother than Harry himself? They have certainly shown, as I said, a lot more grace and class than the Montecito duo. The fact that Victoria had not let any of the storylines come out shows to me that she has got more class than Meghan in her little finger. Meghan obviously felt at the time that she was going to be 
bigger and better because she was a duchess and it obviously went to her head. In hindsight, Victoria and David Beckham as close allies would have opened so many doors for them in Hollywood. I'm in no doubts that Meghan is probably really wishing she had the gift of foresight over that friendship that she might actually have needed Victoria one day. The fact that we've got celebrities fawning all over the Beckhams at the moment, especially because he's just signed Messi. The Inter Miami football team is huge. It is A-list gold. And I can only imagine Meghan is thinking, oh, what can I do? What can I do? I bet you Meghan is busy wrapping up her latest basket full of lemons like she did for Jill Biden, hoping that she can possibly make amends. But if I was Victoria Beckham and I opened my front door and I saw a basket full of lemons, I would stamp all over them in my Le Bouton wellies and return to sender. But hey, I'm bitter like that. But <laughs> And that's my cue to end the video. If it ends on a dad joke, it's definitely time to hang up my hat. So I will be back with you guys very soon. Take care for now. Bye.